here we are back at my Highland Terrarium. A while ago, I posted a video where I unboxed a Nepenthes Attenborei, put it in here, and then showed you what else was going on. But as it happens, that actually wasn't the first Nepenthes Attenborei I had purchased. I had got one a month or two before that, and that's what I want to talk about in this video, as well as a few other odds and ends inside my Highland Terrarium. First of all, let's take a look at the one that I did unbox in that video. That's this one here. It's important to note that Nepenthes Attenboreis take quite a long time to acclimate, longer than Raja, longer than Paloanensis, and longer than Loia in my experience. So this one is actually doing quite well, even though some of the original leaves have started to fade a little bit. For me, the acclimation process of this plant worked out as follows. It sat here doing nothing for a while, and then the old leaves started to fade, but only very slowly. And then after it had more or less completed the acclimation process, it started producing new leaves. And it's producing them now surprisingly quickly. But anyway, behind it, back here, we see a smaller Nepenthes that's buried inside some moss that's starting to grow over it. And we see it has two growth points. That is the Nepenthes attenborei that I had gotten previously that you didn't see in that video. The reason why you didn't see it is because I almost lost it and it wasn't in good shape at the time. What happened is it came as a rosette plant similar to the way the one you did see me unbox looked like, but by the time I got the other one it no longer looked like that. It had sat in here for a few weeks and then I decided to start feeding it osmocote pellets. It had some small pitchers, they were big enough to get smaller osmocote pellets in, and I figured it would help jumpstart its growth. I had never had experience with that in Borei before, but I figured it would be somewhat similar to Raja. Now, this BE3152 Raja over here, which has grown a ton since I got it about a year ago, I didn't actually feed it osmocote pellets right away, which may have been one of the differences. I didn't have osmocote pellets at the time, and and when I did start feeding it osmocote pellets, it started to grow faster. So not thinking that it might want to acclimate first before being fed, I figured that I ought to start with the Attenborei right away. So I fed all the pitchers that it had that were big enough to feed, thinking that it would kill the pitchers off quickly, but get the plant nutrients enough to jumpstart its growth and not affect anything more because that's what I was used to with the Raja. But apparently, at least I assume based on the timing of it, that really wasn't good for it at all because shortly after feeding all those pitchers, it started to rapidly die back. And I assumed that I was going to lose it given just how fast it was dying back. But all of a sudden, a few days in, it stopped dying back and had just two of its oldest leaves left, two that I hadn't fed. You can actually still see those two leaves that I'm talking about, one of which finally did die after basil started to grow. It's the one, the dried up brown one near my finger, and the other one is that slightly yellow one there. I trimmed off all the dead leaves that were dead at the time in order to hopefully get the central part, which was still green, as much light as possible, and also to uncover the leaves that were left, which were slightly shaded by the dead ones, and give it the best chance possible. And it just sat there and sat there and sat there for months. Then eventually, when I was looking at the base to see if it was going to base Basil. By this time, I was suspected it would because it had been so long and it hadn't declined further. I noticed a bump, but I wasn't sure if it was a basil. It wasn't clear, and I accidentally nicked it. At least I think I did. It was small enough I couldn't tell with little scissors that I was using to hold the moss back to get a better look at it and I hoped I hadn't ruined it. However, over the next few weeks, I didn't see any development from it, so I figured maybe I had ruined it. But then from a completely different place that I hadn't had the chance to check very well before, I saw another basil develop, and that was, I think, this one. I'm not totally sure, I don't remember, but I think it's the more exposed one. So I thought, well, okay, maybe I damaged the other one, but it looks like I'm in the clear because it's growing again. But then the original one that I'd noticed first developed too, and I think that's the one closer to me now, closer to the bottom of the screen. So I had two basils, and much to my surprise, they were growing way faster, and they were picturing nicely, which is really great. So it told me it was well acclimated, and it was going to be just fine. So I didn't actually lose it. 
So I guess the lesson is twofold. One, don't feed your Nepenthes right away, especially if they're small. Well, at least if they're small. Even if they have pitchers that are big enough to feed, you want to wait for them to acclimate first. I suspect that's the difference between my Atenborei and my Raja. And then the second issue is that Atenboreis have a tendency to be slow, not just with their growth, but apparently also with their acclimation. So be ready to wait for a few months until it starts to grow again, and then you can feed. So that's my hard-earned lesson in Nepenthe satin borei horticulture. Now for the odds and ends that I mentioned earlier. My Nepenthe paloanensis here has been pitchering a lot. It's been growing quite pretty and large pitchers. The plant clearly needs to be repotted soon. I'm prepping to do that, but it should be good for a little bit longer so I don't have to hurry super fast. Anyway, this is probably the most extraordinary paloanensis pitcher that it's produced yet. I love all the teeth. Oh, uh, and in case you're wondering, it is a seed-grown Borneo Exotics one. I think a 4013 batch member. Yep, 4013, there we go. It's got beautiful dark red pitchers with a beautiful contrasting lemon yellow peristome. It's been quite exciting. It's grown several fairly large pitchers, some of which have already faded. There's another one that's a bit smaller. With this plant, I got it fairly large, and it didn't take too much time to acclimate. It was producing new leaves pretty quickly, or at least so I thought, but it did take quite a while for it to start pitchering. But once it did, I made sure to feed it, and it kept pitchering for me, so it's been very exciting. That's the update with that. I suppose I've already kind of given an update with the Nepenthes Raja. When I got it, it was really small. It was about the size of a penny and it only had one significant rosette. And since it was a tissue culture plant near the base, there were a bunch of very tiny rosettes and I wasn't sure if they were gonna do anything. At this point, about a year in, they've developed heavily and the rosette has grown bigger and it's picturing like crazy. So I'm quite excited to see how that develops. If the large number of basils keeps the overall plant small for longer, that's just fine because I don't have a huge amount of space, at least not without building in the terrarium, and having some more time to do that wouldn't be bad. But also, when it does finally get big, it'll be an especially extraordinary plant because it will have so many growth points already. I won't have to wait for a mature plant to decide to basil. And there's one other update, and that is on my Nepenthes loei. It's grown a lot more leaves and bigger ones than it had when I got it originally, and those leaves have started to pitcher. That's the first pitcher that's been big enough to feed. It's long since acclimated, so I did that without hesitation, and it's been just fine. I'm really excited to see it start producing lower pitchers that are a bit more characteristically low AI, and then, of course, eventually, I'm excited to see it get around to upper pitcher production. And that's about it for my Nepenthes Attenborei near miss and updates on my other Highland Nepenthes. I hope this video is interesting. Thanks for watching.